we've got some special things planned for Memorial Day. So thank you for being our guest and joining us today. We'll be back with you in about five minutes. Go ahead and play a little black guy music if you can up there. Some small people are fellowshipping. That would be great. For those of you that knew, we were sp I was supposed to be at the mud run today, but because of I've got to do a funeral immediately this after the service today, got to go down to Sullivan down on Punk Lake Road. So I'll be down there doing a funeral celebration of life this afternoon at 2 o'clock. So I had to cancel that out going to the mud run. Originally, we were going to be over there sponsoring during the mud run. So June 9th, we plan on being set up, ready to go at the mud run. Lord willing. Yes, so always got to be flexible with scheduling, depending on people's needs. So thank you very much. And I know we'll have a little uh, primo of the mud run on there as well. Thank you.
Lord, just take a moment and take a seat. We're going to change the order around a little bit today. We're going to start out with some prayer and testimony times today. So I'm just, yeah, we like testimonies. Prayer and testimony time on this Memorial Day. So, we'll start out. As we stop the music, there we go. Good, good. I was waiting for a nice smooth break, but there wasn't a smooth break. But we'll take it anyway. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're going to start out. I know last week we had some testimony times that, that seemed to go over very well, like that. We also will part of our prayer time, like that. So uh, Key is going to be taking our prayer requests down. Come on, Key. He's going to take those down for us. Then we'll pray corporately as a group for those there. So if you have prayer requests right now, if you would just uh, mention them or we'll, our, our testimony, we'll do either one. Praise, testimony, whatever you'd like this morning, whatever's on your heart today. How about prayer requests? Yes, Jeanette. Okay. Pray for the Jeanette person. Pray for her. There's some family issues she's dealing with. Yes. Her son. Oh. Wait, how many likes see the sun come out? Yeah, we need both. Two hands over here. It's a good way to get people to raise hands this morning. Good job there. It's great for some. We'd like to have a little sunshine. I actually have to do a funeral this afternoon at 2 p.m. down in Sullivan. It's going to be outdoors. They have a tent. So I would. Li I actually, when I was down with the family yesterday, I was praying for sun. So I hope that that prayer request is answered at least from 2 to 3 today anyway. So thank you. I'd appreciate prayer for the funeral that I'll be doing today, too. Um, pretty large family down there. Usually when you go do a funeral like that, there's a bunch of people there that don't know Christ as Savior, and it's always an excellent opportunity to see people come to know Christ. So we're going to use a verse from the Psalms. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. And you know what? You can easily be a saint. A saint's just a believer. If you know Jesus is a Savior, then you're a saint. So did you know Charles was a saint? You probably did not know him. Just kidding. Just kidding now. And you know what? Anyone that knows Christ as Savior is a saint. That's the truth of it. Excited about doing that and sharing Christ this afternoon. Any other requests? Yes, John. Safety at the mud run. Exactly. I'm disappointed. I planned on being at the mud run sharing the gospel this morning, but I was having a little logistic problems trying to schedule between me and get to the funeral and stuff, so we're going to wait till the 9th to be over there. So the 9th will be at the mud run. Thank you. Safety for people over there. Mom. Unspoken. Thank you, Mom. Appreciate that. Annie. Oh, that's right. Annie's taking her driver's test on Tuesday. And obviously, we want prayer for safety. No, we want prayer that she would pass the driver's test. And uh, I... <laughs> Smack her. We want the smallest guy we can get to get her in that parallel back. And right, she'll do fine. I'm not worried about that at all. Hi, Emily. She'll do fine. But pray that she passed her test. Obviously, she'd like to get a driver's license. Exciting times when you can do those things. Zach. Pray for Zach's dad. He just, I think it was a couple weeks ago, just had another operation. I saw it on Facebook like that. So, show and pray for his dad. Yes. Charles, go ahead. Finances. Finances individually. Finances for the fellowship. Finances are what makes the world go around. Everybody has bills to pay, you know. So, we have them here at the fellowship. Them at the school. Personally, I'm sure people have finances, so we need to pray for finances for everybody. Thank you. Yes, Dustin. What's that? Yes, for Nicole's family. Yep, that was a sad situation. I was actually out of state when I got the results of that right there. I heard about that. So, not a good ending on that. So, definitely pray for the family. Isaac. Say that. It's just a little louder. I got. Yeah. Rain wouldn't be good when you're flying paper airplanes, would it, for your class? No, that would be. That wouldn't be. Sometimes not good when you're flying real airplanes, but definitely not paper ones. Thank you, Isaac. I only got part of it when you said that. I want to make sure I got it right for you. Anybody got a? Let's see. Someone said they want to share a testimony. Morning. Sunny. 
Sonny, if you're out there, come on in. It's testimony time. I'm still out greeting out there. Appreciate Sonny and Nicole out there greeting every week like that. So, prayer request. Prayer request, Ellen? Yes. I just got a bunch of credit cards. I just got a bunch of credit cards. pray that these credit card bills get taken care of so yes that's not good Up, that's for sure. Sonny, did you have a testimony, something you wanted to share this morning? I knew somebody did. I could have brought the microphone here. Okay, Robert. Thank you. Um, this one's this past Wednesday, the rainy of course, like we've been having as usual. And, um, me and my wife, we, neither one of us worked. We're on disability, so we're home, and we just try to make the best of the day. Sunday about how, you know, as long as we make, re remain faithful to the Lord, that even when the bad things happen, that they're still going to work towards the overall good to each and every one of us. And so I'm just kind of sitting there and thinking to myself, well, to me that means that, you know, God's really good at making lemonade out of lemons. And I was just thinking, you know, I'd lost my wedding ring like four months ago. I just could never figure out where it had gone or anything else, and it was just there in the bedroom. And I said, well, why don't I do something creative today, and I'll move the bureaus around and look underneath it. And I did, and thank the good Lord. I got, I got the ring back, and thank Johnny for that good sermon last Sunday. So for me, the good Lord, he, he makes uh, lemonade out of lemons. Thank you. Thanks, son. I appreciate that. When, when he lost that wedding ring, he called me up really just about crying, literally, on the phone, if you can imagine like that. So he prayed on the phone for it like that. And, you know, I, I mean, I've read stories that 30 years later, somebody finds a ring or something like that. So you never give up. And at the right time, God will, God will reward you. So I thought that was exciting to hear that. Someone else? Testimony or prayer request? Justin. Don't talk with your mouth full. Make it quick. Make it quick, too. He's going to be a preacher because he talks too long sometimes. That's how I can tell. Well, um, what it was raining. Um, I was sleeping last night, and I've been thinking about everything, about what happened. It just it blew into my mind. Something had really happened within my mind about the fifteen-year-old. Thank you. 
Christ today. Testimony. Any other testimony? Appreciate Sonny's testimony today. Okay. I get the prayer list from P right there. And you know, while we're praying along, no matter who's leading up here in prayer, if you can kind of just pray along with us, we believe there's power that's going to come up for a prayer like that. So uh, we know that uh, other people pray. Just I may be the spokesperson during the prayer time or Kevin or somebody else, but just join us right along with prayers. You heard the request the same as we did like that. And as the Lord brings them to your attention during the week, make sure to pray for them. Okay, let's go to prayer. Dear God, we pray for each request that we have here today, Lord. There's uh, uh, several uh, unspokens that I heard this morning, God. And uh, God, those you, you know everyone, the unspokens, Lord, and you can take care of them in every way, God. I pray for Jeanette as she's dealing with some family situations right now that are weighing heavy on her heart. So I pray that you'd... Uh, be with her, give her a peace and, and a contentment of knowing that you are still in the throne, you're still in control, and as Sonny was just saying, all things do work together for good. Even bad things work together for good. Purpose, God. So help us to keep our eyes on you and not on the problems, God. God, for uh, Mary Ann's request this morning, God, for sunshine, God, I think even when the uh, things are, are gloomy in our, in our own hearts and lives, God. The sun will cheer us up, God. So we're praying that you'd allow that to happen. It's been raining for a few days now, God. So we could really use some sunshine. I think it would be great for people's attitudes. And uh, God, help us in all areas. God, I have a funeral to do this afternoon at, at Sullivan at 2 o'clock. And God, a very nice family. And I'm excited to do that, Lord. It'll be a sad situation, but also there'll be a time where people can come to know Jesus as personal Savior, God. So please be with that today. For the mud run, uh, pray for safety for all the participants over there, God. Uh, certainly this rain has helped them over there, God. It's going to be a muddy, muddy mess, and they'll have a great time at the mud run today. But, God, it could be dangerous at some time. So please, we want to pray for safety. We have friends and family that will be over there doing that today. Uh, for my mother who has an unspoken today, I pray that you would uh, meet her need in a positive, supernatural way, God. May she know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's you that's answered the prayer, God. And sometimes we say that was good luck or... Um, you know, that was something, but we know it's always your, your will when something happens like that, God. And we thank you for that. For Annie, who's got a driver's test on Tuesday, I pray that you'd give her safety as she's traveling, God. Not from her driving, but other people on the road, God. So just help it to be not much traffic and help everything to go smoothly when she goes to uh, park and make her corners right. Just, just bless everything about it. Help her to know all the right answers for her, her instructor. For Zach's dad, we continue to pray for healing for him, God, as I know he had just another operation, Lord, and he's had a bunch of them, God. So please get that resolved, that situation that he's going through physically, God. God, for Charles' request for finances, God, and Lord, please answer his need, God, whether it's for employment or in any way that he needs help financially. I pray that you would allow that to happen in his family, God. And God, I'm sure there's other people here today, God, that need help financially, God. Uh, there's a lot of expense in food and uh, groceries and just normal living, God, that we need your help by, God. So please do that. Pray for Justin's request for Nicole as she's passed away, God, for her family at this time, God. She'd be with her and be with her family, God. Just a very tough situation, God. And, Lord, for Isaac, that he's got a, a class uh, trip or class uh, time when they're flying paper airplanes that they'd be making, God, that it doesn't rain, that that, that would be a, a good day for his class when they do that. God, for Elsie, as she has a, a situation with some credit cards that it looks like they've been mis misused by a relative, by her daughter, God, so I pray that, God, she would not be responsible for those bills, that you'd work out the details with the credit card companies, and that the end result would be that their relationship would be restored, God. Those are uh, tough, tough situations to go through, God. And I, I do pray for the daughter, God, as uh, God Ellie thinks it might be drug-related or something of that type, God. So if she has an addiction, I pray that you allow her to uh, get the victory in that situation right there. And God, for Sonny's praise, God. I know he was uh, heartbroken when he lost his wedding ring, God. I thank you for providing that. Uh, him to be able to find that, God, just by uh, moving a bureau, find it stuck in a place he least expected to find it, God. So thank you for doing that. Thank you that you've been faithful in, in accomplishing that for him. God, for other people here today, God, for uh, God, I pray for our overall ministry, God. Is, uh, God, we have a, a focus here to see people come to know Jesus Christ as Savior, God. And God, I pray that you would allow us to be productive, to be fruitful in our ministry, God. I pray that it would be a contagious thing, 
that God, uh, uh, not just a, a few of us share our faith. I know I talked with a gentleman this morning that had invited a person and shared his faith, God. And, Lord, that's what we're supposed to do, God. We, we have to leave the results to you, God. I had many opportunities on my trip to share Jesus personally, God. And, God, a lot of times you don't know what the result is, God, but our, our job is, is to tell them how they can be saved, God. So I pray for each member of our, our congregation here today, God, that we would really focus on sharing our faith with our loved ones that are lost, that are unsaved, that don't know 100% for sure they're going to heaven, God. We have the answer for that. So please be with each person here. Be with our congregation as a collectively as a group that we focus on those opportunities to share our faith. God, I pray for our military today, God, as this is Memorial Day, God. And Lord, there's a, a lot of people that have passed away, that have been veterans, that have really served our country, served our people, God. And we want to pray for them and lift them up today, God. And, Lord, I pray for our active uh, men and women that are in the service today, God, and uh, tr- really, literally around the world right now that you'd protect them, God. May they know that, that we are remembering them, that we're having a, a special time of prayer for them right here today, God. So just lift them up and strengthen them spiritually, physically, and in all areas. God, we love you. We thank you for this time today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together. For my good, let's just sing that. You make all things work together for my good. Sing it two more times. All things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You stay the same. You stay the same through the ages. joy comes in the morning and when the oceans rage i don't have to be afraid because i know that you love me your love never Let's sing the first verse. Nothing. Nothing can separate. Even if I run away, your love never fails. I know. I know I still make mistakes, but you you have new mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. You stay the same, you stay the same through the ages, your love, your love never changes, there may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning, and when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I know that you love me. Your love never fails Oh, your love never fails The wind is strong The wind is strong and the water's deep But I'm not alone here in these open seas Your love never fails chasm is far too wide The chasm is far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side But your love never fails You stay the same You stay the same through the ages Tell them your love Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning I know that you love me Oh, your love never fails Oh, your love never fails You may 
make all things You make all things Work together for my good You make all things Work together for my good Oh, I believe you make all things Work together for my good You make all things Work together for my good You stay the same You stay the same through the ages Your love never changes There may be pain in the night But joy comes in the morning And when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Cause I know that you love me Yes you do Your love never fails Oh, I know your love never fails
bless you, our God, and we give you praise and honor this place. We honor you and your presence and your work in our life. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for your blood. We'll never know the cost. We'll never even begin to understand the price that you paid. But we thank you this morning that you call us your own. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn to a couple people before you're seated. Tell them that you're happy to see them. We're going to get ready to do our tithes and offerings section of our, our time of worship. If we could have uh, Charles and, and who else was helping last week with with offering? Who was that? Sonny? Could you come up, Charles and, and Sonny? You know, this is a great time, and I, I almost hate that we have to literally change how we do things, but it serves a purpose. It really does. You see, worship is something that you do all day long, every day. And you do it in all kinds of ways. It could be the way that you uh, mow the lawn after it stops raining for a week. It might be the way that you uh, the way that you spend time with your kids. You do it as a worship to God. It might be the way you do the dishes. It may be the way that you give today to show God, you know what, God, you're in total control of my finances. It's all yours really anyway, but I just want to give you a portion of it. And that's what today is. So I want to encourage you that giving is a form of worship. It's a scriptural form of worship. And one day, coming soon, I promise, we're going to talk about that a little bit. How it's worship, how it's part of what we do as believers. So today I'm going to encourage you to give. If you don't have much, give what you can. If you're a first-time guest, though, by the way, I just want to encourage you, unless you're just led of the Spirit to give. This is really a time for those who are part of the family and those who are members and and, uh, believers. This is a chance for them to show off their love for God. So I want to encourage that right now. Let's pray over this. We're going to bless it. I'm going to send these guys out. We've got a song we want to sing for you. Jesus, we thank you that you died for us. We thank you that you supply every need. Your word says that you are Jehovah uh, Shalom. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And so, Father, we thank you that you have taken care of every single need before it ever comes up. And to show you our faith and show you our trust that your word and your promise is true. Today we give, not out of compulsion, but because we want to. We want to show you that we trust you with our finances. We want to trust you with who you are and what you're about to do in our life. We believe in you, God, and we love you. So we provide an offering of worship today through our finances. I pray that you would bless it, God, and multiply it like you did with the, with the fish and the bread. That it would be more than enough to take care of all the needs of the ministries here so we can reach this county for your son. We pronounce this blessing over your offering. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, amen, amen. Go ahead, gentlemen. and sing with us. Come on.
bless the day. Let's sing that together. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, we've got just a couple of trailers that we want to show you of upcoming events. And before they get started, I just got to tell you, you know, we've had some people step in on the fly today and do some work for us. And I want to show some appreciation to them. We've got Carrie Campbell up there and, and Jen and Ron Abbott. They're filling in like crazy. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And with no further ado, since I know they all three love it when we do that, by the way, it means a lot to them. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see these trailers of upcoming events. Be sure you jot them down because this is where you get it. Okay? There you go. All right. You know what? That happens. It's okay. Johnny, let's, let's take a time of prayer and address a few things, and then uh, we'll, if, if it works, we'll come back to it. How's that? Okay. Well, we always can go back to it if it works, right? That's always, always the hope that we have. First of all, how many of you have picked this up on the way in? We're trying to hand these out on the way in. As you know, here at the Good News Fellowship, we're really trying to get people reading the Bible every day. Not, it's nothing to us to read it, but it's God's Word, and you can't get enough Bible reading. One thing, when I just went on my trip to Vegas, I was flying out, I had seven hours of flight. Five hours the first time, two the, uh, two the first, five the second. And most of the time, I was working on my presentation out there, which was a Bible presentation of the gospel. So I read the Bible for about seven hours going out. And I can tell you for sure, when I got there, I, mean, I felt like I could fly without the plane, really. Uh, seriously, I was just so fired up and pumped up like that. So I can't, and just from personal experience, even just that last week, get in the Bible, read it every day. Don't, don't, no matter what. It only takes just a few minutes to do this. It really does. But spend the more time you spend, the more spiritual you will become because God's a spirit. He speaks to us through his word. That's why we hand these out. We only give you a week in advance like that. If you miss a day, uh, don't pound your head on the floor. Just go back and the next day. Start again. Pick it up where you are. And really, just get in the habit. It's just a habit like anything else of reading the Bible every day. I happened to look at this this morning, and it's Job, starting in the book of Job, chapter 1. This is a great time. If you're not doing this, grab one of these and start today. Sunday's always the first day. Job, chapter 1. How many of you know who Job is? I'm just curious. Raise your hand if you know who Job is. Okay. Job probably had more trials and tribulations than anybody I have ever read about or heard about ever. Ever, ever, ever. That's why there's a book in the Bible called Job. And when you read that, you, you look at it and you say, man, how do he do this? How can he stand that? How all these things that happen? I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to take away from the, the Bible reading. But bad, 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 bad. And all the way through it, the end result is good, 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 good. Because he followed God. He obeyed God. As a matter of fact, God took him through the time and brought him back out way ahead of what he had before. You'll do the same thing in your life. All things work together for good. So read this. If you're not doing this, please pick it up this week. If you didn't get some, I've got a few more left on the table right there. We're trying to hand them out as you come in because we don't want to miss anybody getting into the Word of God every day. In six years, you'll be through the Bible. You'll have an overview of the entire Bible in six years if you do this. And I really encourage you to do that. Get involved with that right there. 
now. Uh, but just before we have Kevin's going to come, we're going to have a, a prayer for our youth today. I've got another resignation to tell you about today. Justin and Johanna Fickett have resigned. They are now out of state, so they are no longer the youth directors here at the Good News Fellowship. And we'll be going back to our Saturday evening program um, probably this coming week. You know, we'll start it back up. That was a very, very highlight of the youth in this community. We had anywhere from 50 to 100 kids almost every Saturday night. It kind of petered down because we put emphasis in some areas. We're going to be building that back up starting this week. So for those of you that, that want to get involved with it, we won't have thousands of teenagers this coming Saturday. It'll take us three or four weeks to get our program back up and running like that. I know several of you worked with us in the past on it. It was very effective. We had a lot of people there that didn't know Christ. We always had new kids there every Saturday night. So we're excited about that happening like that. So this coming Saturday night, you can see Pastor Kevin. And if you want to come and volunteer and get involved with that, we'll start building that back up. We have a database of probably three or 400 names on there that we'll be contacting them. Uh, a lot of the teens really were disappointed when we dropped that, uh, cut it back even, and kept kind of cutting it back and put more emphasis on Wednesday night like that. So we're going to shift that back in gear and get that Saturday night back up there. So we'll be back on that database this week. But it literally, realistically, it'll take three or four weeks to get it back up and running the way that it was. So we're excited about that. Uh, King and Jones is going to help us. Uh, Caitlin's going to help us. We may have one surprise guest, another 18-year-old in the community, home from college that I talked with this week that wants to get involved, I think. He's praying about it right now. And he, if he does, he'll join us full-time for the summer while he's home for the college. Outstanding young man. So I hope I hope Lord leads him into doing that right there. So with that, Kevin, I guess we'll come forward. But pray for the Youth Nation like that. We want to get it back up. I know several of you had children that were in Youth Nation coming along and know how much fun it was. A lot of work, but a lot of fun, too, at the same time. And a lot of people got saved over those years. You know, just before I turn it over to Kevin, I would like to say one thing. All the ministries we do here... We give for one thing. That's to see people come to know Christ as Savior. We're not ashamed of it like that. Uh, between now and the end of the year, we feel we've got the right plans and right layout of stuff here in the community to make it happen where we can have an effective outreach to see people saved in this community. It's taken longer than I anticipated, a lot of time to set this up. We have it set up so that there will be a person visit every household in Hancock County over a 90-day period and give a... It's called, we're going to do it by a survey format. If I went down to see Mary Ann down to her house, I would say, you know, we're representing the Good News Fellowship. We've got a survey we'd like to have you take like that. You, you introduce yourself. It's a very brief survey. The survey is about spiritual things. Do you believe there's a heaven? What do you think when you ask that? A lot of people say, yes. Do you believe you can go to heaven? Do you want to go to heaven? Yes. Do you know for sure you're going to go to heaven? That's where the conversation changes a lot. Well, you know, I hope I am. I, I'd like to, but I, I'm really not sure how to get there. So it's a survey that you lead somebody through, very non-threatening. We've done it about 15 years ago on a lot smaller group. It was very, very effective. So we're going to do that in the community, and I believe between now and the end of the year, we can see a lot of people accept Christ as Savior. When you accept Christ as Savior, the reason why we're here is to still tell other people, people that we know. You all know somebody I don't know, and I know people you don't know. So it's my responsibility to tell my friends and, and neighbors, and it's yours to tell yours. But if we all do it together and we get more people involved doing it, we'll see our county one to Christ between now and the end of the year. So we're still we're on the same path. You know, people come and go in ministries. People come and go in churches. People come and go in leadership. Those things happen. But the Bible is always the same. Jesus never changes, and God wants people saved everywhere around the world. So... We're never going to vary from that course. We're going to stay right here doing the same thing and seeing people, but in a different way. There's a reason why the state of Maine is the least church state in the nation. Because the churches and us as Christians have done it the wrong way for a lot of years. We need to change and get that gospel message out to people like that. If we, if we continue to do the same thing the way we've been doing it for the last 50 years, we're only going to get the same results. If we want to see something done differently, we've got to make some changes. Not in the message, how it's presented. The work of seeing people saved is done out in the community. And we always give the gospel. We want to see people saved in here in the youth nation. But the work is done out in the communities with the relationships you have every day. Don't forget that. That's really the way it's supposed to be. With that, I'll turn it over to Kevin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As, as it should be. Hey, listen. Are we all set? Well, before, before we, uh, I tell you what, 
I, I don't want I don't want to mess up anything. So we're going to show these trailers, and then uh, I, I really want to share some information with you. So if you have if teens are, are present, make sure they're around, or children before we uh, right after these trailers. I want I want to have a time of prayer with them. Okay, let's let's try these and see if they'll work this time. Okay, well, that's all right. You know, what we're, what we're trying to accomplish is uh, create an atmosphere here that is family-oriented. Uh, you're going to discover that I'm all about family. I've homeschooled my children. Uh, I've, I've made some strong decisions as a, as a father, uh, as well as in my years of ministry, that I'm going to focus on family. Uh, without the family, everything else falls apart. It's just that simple. And I know a lot of parents aren't quite there yet. So we're going to do some things to help the parents. We're going to do some things to help the, the children as well to understand the importance and the quality uh, of family life and how that can change dynamically the culture of a community. And it all starts here. So that's why we're, we're, we're going to be a family fellowship. Part of that is I recognize that there's been some transitions, a few, lately. And, uh, uh, you know, I heard overheard my wife sharing a little bit ago that with our children and our pets, it's not easy to move. Uh, so I can assure you one thing. When I set ground, I set ground, and I'm here to stay, all right? I don't move easily. So uh, I, I'll, I'll adapt anything for the sake of the gospel. I'll do any, I'll, if, if I'm sent somewhere, I'll go there. But goodness sakes, I don't like to move. So <laughs> I'll... Uh, I'll assure you that. And, and that might be a plus. It may be a negative in your book. You have to decide that for yourself. But uh, I'm here. That said, could I have... Um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm debating whether I want to go into something else first or not. I really want to share with you sometime my vision for the fellowship. And I, I'm afraid we're not going to have enough time today to get everything in if I do that. So... I'm going to say to be continued next week. Bring some people out with you, okay? I want to share with you the vision, uh, of, I, and you're going to find it's right in line with what Johnny's been telling you all along anyway, and we're just adding to it to make it strengthened, you know? I, I've heard some people say, we need, we need some Bible studies. We need to go deeper. Praise God, I agree. You can't last on milk unless it's ice cream. Then you can eat a lot of that. However, I agree, we need some meat. So, so we're going to set that up. We're going to start doing some things, but the, the focus, the primary focus is always going to be, where are the lost? Are we reaching the lost? Where are they today? Okay, that's, that's the focus. That said, we've gone through some transitions. If I could have my wife and Heather and Johnny come up, um, we're, we're just going to show a united front here on an issue. We love you, and we love your kids, and we love the kids that are here. And I'm going to ask something of you. How many of you guys remember we prayed for Emma last week? Was that last week or was that the week before? Thank you. It's been a full week last week. Emma's doing very well from what I understand, yeah? Imagine that. We prayed for her. She's better. There might be a coincidence there. God might be at work. So... I, I want to show you that this is nothing that is kooky or one man or woman does. There is something, though, about laying on of hands, and that it's biblical. We have some young people here today, and I'm going to ask you to step outside your comfort zone just for a moment. And I want you to go find a young person. I don't care how young they are. I don't care if they're a teenager or not. And I'm going to ask you just to surround them. Just somebody find, you go find somebody and just surround them and, and just touch them with your hand. We're going to pray together, but I'm going to ha- assign you guys to do that, okay? We're going to stand together here, and we're going to agree in prayer together. There's some over here. There, there's a small gaggle over here. <laughs> you may not realize it, but they want your prayers. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you step out of your comfort zone even a little bit more. I'm going to start off just asking you to pray over them. You, with your own words, pray over them. You can do it all at the same time. You can do it one at a time. I don't care how you do it. 
I want you to pray that they would be healed and from the transitions and the difficulties they've been going through. I want you to bless them in the name of Jesus as they continue through this transition time. Is that okay? Okay? I'll start you off, and I want you guys to continue, okay? All right. So I'll just, I'll, I'll join you with Zach. Come on, man. Yeah. Father, we pray over these, these kids. I pray over Zach right now, God, and I pray that you would bless him. He's been through a rough time. I pray that you would bless him, take care of his heart, mend his heart, God, for any hurt or woundedness or any kind of offenses that have been done to him or he feels, God, in his heart. I pray that you would mend those in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would bless him and prepare him to be the man of God that you have destined for him to be, God. He's to rise up. He's to be a leader in the community as he goes and finds people that need your son. So I pray that you would bless him right now. In Jesus' name. Now, I want you just to continue to do that for people right there that you have your hands on. Okay? Just continue to do that. Amen, amen. Yes, Father, we thank you right now for each one of these people. Not just, not just the kids, but God, I thank you for the parents and the adults that are here. We come together united, God. We want to see this country and this, this county right here, Hancock County, changed. Uh, and the culture, the climate, the, the, even the laws, God, reflecting those that, that are, are represented in your word because of the work of Jesus Christ in the hearts of every single person in this county. I believe for lower crime rates. I believe for less need for uh, emergency calls and that sort of thing because your spirit is working in the hearts of people as we do the work that we were assigned to do. So, Father, right now we bless our youth. We bless them in the name of Jesus that you would remove any hurts. You would heal, God, every heart that's uh, hardened or, or burdened because of, of uh, transitions that they don't understand. I pray that you would instill inside of them that Romans eight twenty eight that you are going to work everything out for their good in the name of Jesus. And we all agreed and said, now before you go anywhere, teens and, and children, I want you to look, stand up and look around you at the people that are around you. You know, you, you have families that love you. And right here at the fellowship, you've got a family that loves you and cares about you, and you mean the world to them. And I want you just to look around and and give some hugs and let them know that you appreciate the prayers. And after that, you can make your ways back to your seats. Carrie, is the presentation for with Reagan and uh, the pictures, is that going to run okay? Let's, let's give it a shot. Oh, wait. Wait, there it is. Do we have audio? To remember to pay tribute to those we loved. For some of us here today, our... Love is the unquenchable, unforgetting love of a wife or child for a fallen father, of a mother or father for a fallen son. For others of us, this love, while more distant, is still anguished and grieving. Ours is a love for a fallen countryman who died so that we, a free people, might live and this great nation endure. Even as we hear these words, we understand again their inadequacy. We appreciate a new Lincoln's humble wisdom at Gettysburg. When brave men die, it is their deeds, not our words, that are remembered. It is their sacrifice, not our brief recollection, that offers everlasting testimony to their love for others, their love for us. But we're human, and today we know such great heartache. So we come to this place to seek the simple assurance of each other and the hope of finding a higher meaning, a greater purpose. And so we ask 
Why did this happen? Why to them? Could anything be worth such a sacrifice? And these fallen, whom we knew and loved, but rarely thought of as great men or legends, can we now truly say they are heroes? And even if we can, would we not rather have them back? Ordinary men again, perhaps, but still ours, ours to hold and to keep. The answers are hard. Hard because memory forces some of us to remember other faraway places, which Americans had never heard of until their sons and brothers and fathers and friends fell there. Each Memorial Day, and especially with the news of the past week, my own mind has turned many times to the Great War of 46 years ago. Few of us who live. Our task today is simple and sad. It's, it's just to remember to pay Thank you. Yeah, that was a speech by Ronald Reagan back in 87 on the USS Stark in Florida. And he has, he has a line in there that I absolutely love, where he's, he speaks of and he says, I'll paraphrase for you, he says, it's, it's not their, our words or our memories that change things. It's what we do. It's what these men have done that changes things. When a man lays down his life, that changes things. And so today we honor, of course, your friends and our, our families, the men and women who've died for our country today. That's what this is about. Memorial Day is, uh, it's, it's, it can be a tough one sometimes to speak on because you're, you're, you're slanted one way or the other. Do you talk about men or do you talk about God? How do you work that out? Well, there is a common scripture that, that we normally read. But I think it can be illustrated really well. And I hope this, if this video doesn't play, that's fine. We'll just march right on. What do you think? No. No. <laughs> okay. If you would open with me in your Bibles to Joshua. This is an Old Testament book. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit later about why Old Testament books are so important. But I want you to open to Joshua. And if you don't have it, we'll have it up on screens here. And I'm going to start at verse 14 out of chapter 3. Joshua 3, 14. Now, how many of you guys remember uh, when Moses crossed the Red Sea? I mean, obviously, that's a familiar story. A lot of us remember Moses crossed the Red Sea. But did you realize there was another crossing of the sea? Oh, yeah. This is a little different, isn't it? Joshua. Here we are. Chapter 3, verse 14. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Verse 15. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap at a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan. While the water flowed down to the Sea of Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. I like this because this one at least explains how it went about and happened. Where the water puddled, where it wasn't, and how they were able to do it. With the Red Sea, there was a little bit going on, right? They were getting chased and all. There's no time to explain, right? This one, we get to see exactly what happened. And I'm, if you're with me, I'm at verse 17. The priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped... In the middle of the Jordan, that's some faith right there. <laughs> There's a sea all around them, and they just stop right in the middle of it. They stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed crossing on dry ground. Chapter 4, verse 1. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. <laughs> each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder. 
according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you in the future. I love this. This is key here. When your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Pay attention to that right there. Keep reading. Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. <clears throat> These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Verse 8. So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, as the Lord had told Joshua, and they carried them over with them to their camp, where they put them down. Joshua set up the 12 stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they are there to this day. Now the priests who carried the Ark remained standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything the Lord had commanded Joshua was done by the people, just as Moses had directed Joshua. The people hurried over, and as soon as all of them had crossed the Ark of the Lord, and the priests came to the other side while the people watched. I'm going to stop there for now. I love the fact that it says it was a memorial. And what was the purpose of the memorial? To spark discussion. When someone saw it, when the children saw it, what was the point of this? Later in that speech by Reagan, I really, really entice you, I implore you to look up that speech. Ronald Reagan, 1987, USS Stark. Look up the remarks. It's awesome what he says. He says, these men have died, and someday their children are going to ask questions. They're going to ask a question, why are we free? Why, do we, why are we able to assemble like we are today? And those children's questions can be answered by saying, because your father, your grandfather, your uncle, your aunt, your grandmother paid the ultimate price. Memorials are very important. In fact, on a much lighthearted, more lighthearted note, we had a memorial just recently. I'm rubbing my belly. You know where this is headed. <laughs> this week, as, as, as you can imagine, has been a little bit odd. You know, lots of things going on. And we're having our 9 a.m. staff meeting. We have a 9 a.m. prayer time. And somewhere during the prayer time, we, we mentioned, you know what would be good right about now with coffee is, is some pie. Pie and coffee. Is there any better way to have prayer? I don't think so. So we discussed this. Well, the next day, you know what we did? We forgot. We all showed up and all of us looked at each other like, why don't you have pie? <laughs> None of us had pie. So we decided tomorrow, we're, we're going to do pie tomorrow. We forgot again. Now, mind you, this is not like me to forget food. Um, so I said, that's it. And I made a mandate. I said, this Friday, we're calling it Pie Day Friday that we should not forget. From here on out, each Friday at 9 a.m. shall be Pie Day Friday. <laughs> and we had pie. We had strawberry rhubarb and custard pie, and we had coffee, and the Lord was there. And we were all very happy. <laughs> it made for a much more uh, 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 wonderful prayer time. It's hard to beat prayer, and food, especially when it's pie. Well, that was a memorial for us. <laughs> it, was, it was a way for us to remember. You know, and how many, well, is it more, I'm looking across the audience, and most of us are at least near the same age group. I was going to say, for those of you who at least can remember the Carter administration, or were around for that, I'm just using that as a marker, the time frame. Uh, we, we used to do silly things like wrap strings around our fingers to remember things, right? Remember that? Or you put a rubber band on it. I, you, if, there were, if you got the real wide ones, you could write something on it, right? Oh, yeah. Now, of course, we have iPads and phones and emails and all kinds of great things. that makes it a whole lot easier and not as uh, ugly to remember things, right? You, you have all kinds of great ways to remember. But, uh, you know, if you look in the Bible, I want to just point out, and I've mentioned this before, and I'll mention it over and over and over. All through scripture, God says, remember, remember, remember. And there's a reason for that. I'll show, I'll, in fact, I'll show you some of the memorials he's used. Uh, think back, uh, everybody help me out with this one. And, and, and I'm, I'm for interaction, so talk out loud. Uh, what about Noah? God wanted to make a promise so everyone, when they saw something, would remember his promise. What did he use? Rainbow, Rainbow right? Okay, that's, that's an easy one. Good, good, good. Let's, let's do one a little bit more difficult. 
Let's test your Bible knowledge. What about Jacob? Jacob got an amino wrestling match with the Lord. His hip. Yeah, somebody got it. Yeah, his hip. God wanted Jacob to remember forever, you've been with me, and your, your descendants are going to know that you were with me because you're going to have this limp, you know, the rest of your life. Oh, that's very good, very good. I thought I was going to stump a couple people with that one. What about God's promise to Abraham? He says, I'm going to give you nations, nations, and nations, and all you have to do are look to the, the stars. That's a memorial, right? God wants us to remember. What about, uh, have you guys ever been a part of a Seder supper or Passover supper? You guys, anybody ever done that? Oh, we're going to have to do one. Oh, it's not that the food's good. Believe me, it's not that. <laughs> In fact, the mustard and the green, no, it's not, that's not great. But the power behind it is amazing, what it represents. What does it represent? Passover supper. Why do you have that? The Exodus, when, when they left Egypt. And each part of that meal is to help them remember something that they went through. You have to eat these bitter herbs. Oh, and, and they're doused in salt water to represent their tears at the time. Oh, it's, it's awful. It's really great. You should do it. <laughs> God wanted us to remember you shouldn't kill people or have a, you know, commit adultery, you know. Uh, T showed me some uh, redneck commandments the other day that just absolutely, I couldn't stop laughing. And, and I thought immediately to some of my family members, but that's a whole other issue. So God wrote them on something for Moses. Stone tablets, right? Which, by the way, nothing screams remember this, like writing it on stone, right? Okay, so. Okay, another test. One more test from the Old Testament. Here's one that, unless you've really studied some of the the Hebrew background, you you probably won't know. Purim. Ooh. Purim. Anybody? No? No, no? I'll give you a hint. It involves a queen. Oh, wrong one. She, she, uh, she saved her entire people. Esther, yes. Purim is where the entire Israel nation, the nation of Israel, remembers that they were all going to be terminated, <laughs> extinct, genocide, if it weren't for the brave act of one person. Wow. And that's why they have the Feast of Purim. Check it out sometime. It's good. Today, we, we do some more things today. New Testament church, we do. How about um, Christmas? Today, we set apart to get gifts. I know, right. What else? <laughs> Chris, we, we remember the birth of Christ. What about uh, Good Friday? No, no, no. Well, it's going to be this year. But typically, Good Friday is the, when Jesus was crucified. Easter is when he... Was rose, rose again, right. And, of course, uh, communion. Yeah, it's the Last Supper. And in that, we remember what he did, right? Yeah. Oh, so good. George uh, Santayana, he has a really famous quote that gets misquoted all the time. So I've got it right here so I don't misquote it. He says, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. God wants us to remember because he doesn't want to walk in the ways that our fathers have walked. We will do it if we don't remember. God's call to you today is remember. And why does he want you to remember? Because he wants to be in a real love relationship with you. That's why he wants you to remember. He wants you to remember his nature. That he wants you to be able to look back at stories and understand that things got really, really difficult in the past. But the bottom line is, he always came through, no matter what the situation was. He, he wants you to look back and remember that if you're walking outside of his will, do you remember what happened to Achan? Do you remember what happened to Balaam? Do you remember what happened to Nebuchadnezzar? Do you remember what happened to... These are men who walked out of the will of God. That's why we read these stories. That's why the Old Testament, by the way, is very important. It might be a little bit difficult, some of the names... Shoot, some of the titles of the books are a little bit difficult. Habakkuk? Sounds like you're coughing. It's a great book, though. I'm not going to lie. It's a very good book. You should read it. All right. He sets up reminders so we don't forget what our fathers went through. It's good for us to learn from the Old Testament. It is good for us to learn from the Old Testament. You're about to start on the journey of Job. 
And if you, uh, real quick sidestep, if you were to look at the, uh, the lineup of actual chronological history of books, Job is actually somewhere near Genesis. Just throw that out there so you kind of wrap your head around the culture when you're reading the book of Job. Understand what was going on. The, what were the people like? Think Genesis. Think early Genesis, like five. And that's where Job was. Kind of throw that out there for you. All right. We know that the men and women that we saw here today, they served our country, and by their deaths, we have won national freedom, all right? It's freedom to assemble, freedom to bear arms. They preserved our national freedom by their deaths. Jesus served our Heavenly Father, and by his death has given us spiritual freedom. The freedom to assemble as saints. Freedom to share his love with other people. The freedom to know his presence throughout the day. I'd like to uh, start closing up as I share, share this scripture with you from John 15, verses 12 and 13. Jesus was wanting to make sure that you understood what his death was for. And he says, my command is this, love each other the way I've loved you. And he was giving them a snapshot about what was to come. He says, verse 13, greater love has no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Did you get that? He sees you as his friend. You might feel real far away from Jesus at this moment, but he sees you as a friend. You might actually be working against him this morning, but he sees you as his friend. He laid down his life for his friends. These countrymen that served, I guarantee you, none of them knew me. They laid their life down for me, that I could have freedoms. Jesus, on the other hand, knew me. He knew every single sin I would commit. He knew how I would betray. He knew how I would lie, how I would gossip, how I would cheat. He knew my nature and didn't think it too much to lay down his life. Think of it like this. Romans 5.8 says that God demonstrates his love for us. That while we were still sinners, he died for us. In fact, verse 10 of that same chapter, chapter 8, he says that we were actually considered enemies of God. Not by God. But if you just looked at our nature, we were doing everything to be considered an enemy of God. And this morning, I I think I recognize most of the faces well enough. I don't want to assume any of you know Jesus yet. But I will say this. That if you're working contrary to God, you may feel that you're an enemy of God. But he still died for you. And that is still very true that you are his friend. And he still wants to be in a love relationship with you this morning. In closing, our family members, the brave heroes that we've shown here today, they gave the ultimate display of love. Greater love has no man, right? That's what the scripture said. Today, Jesus wants you to know that he's already done it. He's already laid his life down. It's a done deal. Johnny, would you mind coming up? Johnny's going to share the gospel with you this time. And as, as he does this, I want you to keep in mind, for those of you who who already know Jesus, and I, I want to target the men just for a moment. Men, we have a strong mandate as spiritual leaders. You're the spiritual leader of your home. I don't care how much you think the wife rules the roost. You're the spiritual leader of the home. A, it's time to step up. And B, what are you doing in your home to reach the lost? Christ died for you. Your call is to go out and make more disciples. How does your home reflect that? You can say you want more meat, you want more Bible studies, you can say you want all kinds of things, but if you're not doing the Great Commission, then it seems like you're missing the milk. Men, it's time to step up. We've got a job to do. Now then, for those of you who don't know Jesus, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine, Johnny, 
we'd like to share with you about Jesus. Thank you, Kevin. You know, I was thinking about what Kevin was just saying when I saw the verse up on there about being a friend of God. And I was thinking about a verse in John chapter 1, verse 12. It says, but as many as received him, talking about Jesus, to them gave he power to become the children of God. So one thing to be a friend of God, but how about being a child of God, be adopted into his family spiritually? You know, we've had a blessing of having an adoption in our family. My youngest son adopted a little girl in China when she was nine months old. She's six years old now. And I know what a blessing that was in our family to have that physical adoption over here. But what I'm talking about is a spiritual adoption where we actually become a part of God's family. That's pretty awesome right there. And you know what? He said very clearly in his, in his book with the Bible, there's only one thing that every person has to do to become a friend of God and a child of God and that's to believe, to trust in Jesus, to believe that Jesus really was God's son, that he really did come to earth 2,000 years ago, that he really was born of a virgin, so he didn't carry on a sinful line. He came born sinless because he didn't have a human father. That's why he was sinless. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit of God, not of a man here on this earth. So the sin that Adam and Eve started years ago wasn't passed down to Jesus. But it is to us. We have earthly fathers. But if we put our faith, our trust, and our belief in Jesus as our Savior and ask him to forgive us of our sins, that's the only requirement a person has to do to go to heaven. And many of you have heard me say that many times. And I was talking with a couple people this morning. Learn to present the gospel yourself. It'll be in your own words. But the gospel is always the same. The message is always the same. But when you present that to someone, that's all a person needs to do is have that faith, that trust, and that belief. So I try to passionately persuade people. I did when I was in Las Vegas, and I do right here in Ellsworth. Try to passionately persuade people because it's the only way a person ever gets to heaven. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No person gets to the Father except through me. So right now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. All you have to do is believe that Jesus really was the Son of God, that he really did come from heaven, left the treasures and pleasures of heaven to come here to this earth, took on the form of a man, lived here for 33 years, died on the cross, was buried. But then here's the difference between Jesus and the rest of us. He rose again the third day because he's God so that we could have eternal life if we put our faith and trust in him, proving he was the first fruit, the first one to do that. We can have that same eternal life in heaven with him we put our faith and trust in him. So right now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. Usually, I have you bow your heads. You know what? I'm not even going to do that today. I'm going to have you just think about it. You can look at me, but focus on what you want to think and say to God. In your own mind, I'm going to just read a prayer out loud. I want you to say it right where you're sitting right there. Dear God in heaven, I admit that I'm a sinner. You can close your eyes. Some of your eyes. You can. You don't have to, but you do whatever you're comfortable doing. There's, no ma- There's nothing magical about closing your eyes. There's nothing magical about the words that I'm going to say and ask you to repeat. You're saved by your faith, not by whether your eyes are open or shut, not by your words, not by your good works, not by how much you put in the offering plate today. You're saved by your faith and trust and belief in Jesus. One simple thing. But the difference is you either got it or you don't have that faith. You can't manufacture it. You can't create it. It's not artificial. You either believe or you don't believe. It's as simple as that. But if you believe and if you have that faith and trust in Christ, you're going to go to heaven. Let's continue on the prayer. Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I know I have sin in my life. The sin that was preventing me from going to heaven was the sin of unbelief. I didn't believe in Jesus. But now I do, and now you can too, if you have your faith and trust and belief in Jesus. So right now, Jesus, forgive me of the sin in my life. Forgive me of unbelief. I want to have faith. I want to have trust. I want to have belief in you. It's the most important thing we can have. The most valuable thing we can have is faith and trust and belief in Jesus. I want that right here today. So right now, I'm asking you to forgive my sins and give me that faith and trust. Now, thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to have that saving faith that I can know for sure I'm going to spend eternity in heaven when I die and leave this earth. And now every head bowed just for a minute. We'll close in prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul today. And God, if I was already saved, thank you for reassuring me that I'm saved. 
Because the life that you've given me spiritually is eternal. I'm never going to lose it. I'm always going to have it. I'm always going to know I'm going to spend eternity with you in heaven today. So thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. You know what? Right now, if anybody prayed that for the you can look at me. If anybody prayed it for the first time, just hold your hand up just for a minute. I'm just curious. If you did it for the first time, I'm going to pray for you. Did you do it for the first time today? You've done it before, haven't you, Justin? Did you pray that? Or, you, or maybe you didn't have your hand up. You're just stretching. Okay. All right. You, okay. If you did it for the first time today, that's great. But you know what? Just like you're born once physically, you're only going to be born once, born again, once spiritually. You have a physical birth and a spiritual birth. You're not both born two or three times physically. You're not born two or three times spiritually either. One of each. Here's the difference. If you're born once physically, you'll die twice. The second death's not fun. But if you're born twice and the second one's a spiritual, you're only going to die once because you're going to be in heaven to live with God for all eternity. That's a wonderful promise we get from God's Word. So right now, I want to thank you all for your attention. Now, you know what? What I just told you is a very simple message, isn't it? It doesn't take very long. Go tell somebody else out there that doesn't know Christ as Savior. When I was at the convention out in Las Vegas, I had a pretty good-sized crew in the room there, and I said, you know what? I open up in prayer about the Oklahoma tragedies out there, the, the tornadoes, people killed and hurt. And I said, you know what? But there's one tragedy even worse than that. The tragedy is if you have an unsaved friend or relative and you don't tell them about Jesus, that's even worse. Because that's their eternal security and destiny we're talking about. I'll be honest with you. At this stage in my life, I don't care whether they get mad at me or not. They don't, because usually you, you preface it right, and you, they know you love them, you care about them. You take just a few minutes that you want to share with them. They won't be mad at you set it up right, if you set it up right. They really won't. I'll be glad to teach you. Kevin and I were talking about it. I want to spend time teaching you how to share your faith. It's not hard to do. It really isn't. There's a technique. You can learn to do it. We'll help you with it. We'll practice. We're going to, we know what we used to do some role playing. I think Cindy did one with me. I can't remember who else did. John did one with me. John and I were hunting one day, and I shared my faith with him. We've done it a lot of times with people in India. Just practice it. We're going to do that because we need to learn that. The biggest tragedy we have, I'm going to ask you a question. If you, we all got in our cars. We sat driving down here. There's a house on fire over on the right. You know somebody in that house. They're asleep, taking a nap, Sunday morning nap. They're riding by. Taking, should have been here at the fellowship, but they're taking a nap. House is on fire. We're driving by. You know somebody's in there. What do you do? Drive by and say, oh, that's too bad. That, that house is on fire. I hope somebody drives by. Maybe somebody else will come by and, and tell them about it. No, you're going to stop your car. You're going to run up to the horn, pound on the door. Get out. Get out. The house is on fire. You're going to do your best to save them physically, aren't you? And the reason why I share that with you is sometimes we, we overlook the importance of how important that is spiritually. Because we're so busy with the things of this world. I've been guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. I'm not throw, well, I'm saying we all do it like that. But I really try my best to try to not do that on a regular basis. And I know Pastor Kevin's burdened the same way I am. We want to see Hancock County one to Christ. And it's going to take every one of us doing it and more. We hope that over these next few months we can recruit more people that believe in what we're talking about doing. it. You know what? If you get rejected, I shared the gospel several other times on my trip out there in Vegas just with people I was talking with. You know, nobody was mad at me. Some, some will think about it. Some will accept. Some will reject. They reject. I had a guy Facebook this morning and said, you know, I just, I just don't agree with you on that. I said, well, that's fine. But he wasn't mad about it. He just told me he didn't agree with me. That's all. No problem. We'll keep praying for him. Keep trying to lead him to the Lord. It's a process. It's a process. Very few people, the very first time they hear the gospel, get saved. It's a process. You have to build it. Some sow. Some sow a little bit more. Some water. And some harvest like that. It's a process. It's like growing a garden. So with that, Kevin, I'll turn it back to you. All thank right. you very well, much. Uh, thank you, Johnny. We're we're cl- We're finishing up the service and i just want to share we're family so i just want to share this you know what? we're trying some different things as far as with media and some odds and ends um so we're we're just going to keep experimenting and see what works we want to make sure like i said that we we have a family friendly fellowship something that kids and teenagers and adults and seniors all feel welcome here and and are engaged we want it fast paced to where things change from time to time to keep Interest levels high, but yet is the power and the uh, the message isn't lost. So as we're as we're learning together, I encourage you not to be discouraged, but know that we're working hard to make sure that uh, we get things in in order, um, but fun. All right. And lastly, um, what you can expect next week to give you a heads up, what to look forward to, is I'm going to start sharing vision 
and mission statement for the church next week. So be sure to come out for that. Uh, and, of course, bring whoever it is that you, you witnessed to this week out. Don't forget them. Uh, take some extra time. You may have to wake up a little bit early to go grab them and pick up and get them here, but that's all right. Uh, we're, we're needing some positions filled here, guys. We need, I need ushers. I need greeters. I need deacons and elders and all those kinds of great things. And I'm, I'm, I'm calling on all. We, we need it. So uh, I'll be approaching some of you soon. Within the next month or so, we're going to start filling some of these voids. The work of the kingdom has to go forth. And if you're interested in, in sitting back at a fellowship where you can literally just sit back and do nothing at all and continue to attend, I guarantee you there's lots of places all around the city that would love to have you. Here at this fellowship, we're going to be working for the kingdom, every single one of us. We're winning souls. We're working here at the fellowship doing what we can. This is a place where we show people how to live out the gospel, not how to sit back and do nothing with it. Amen? Yes, ma'am. I will share that with you another time. Okay. But we will, de- we will address that at another time. Yep. We will address that for sure. So, with no further ado, let's stand up. I appreciate your patience today. It's a little bit, like I said, it's a little bit uh, odd when, you know, we got some people, like I said, who stepped in last minute and volunteered to do some stuff that they don't normally do, working with equipment that doesn't want to do anything. And uh, I appreciate them. Uh, and nothing like telling a computer to do something and it just stares at you. So, uh, you know. So if, if, you, uh, if you get a chance, uh, just throw a thank you up to the upstairs people, okay, As, on your way, all right? So let's close with a word of prayer. I have kept you much longer than I ever anticipated, uh, but, but I believe God's been good. Amen? Yeah. Father, thank you for your family that you have here at the fellowship. I thank you for growing it, by, not by, by just us being uh, sitting around, but I thank you for growing it because we're actively working like we would in a garden. We're sowing, we're, we're uh, tilling, we're, we're doing the work of the kingdom, and it's going to grow as a result of it, Father, for your glory so that more souls are saved. And that's the bottom line, God. We're not interested in numbers. We're just interested in the numbers of the people that know you increasing. That's all. So, Father, I thank you for blessing each one of these who've come out to worship uh, and and hear the word. I pray it just uh, resounds within their hearts the rest of this week. I pray again for financial blessings. I pray I speak blessings out in their homes and in their families and in their friendships, in the schools and in their workplaces. God, that everywhere they walk, they experience your presence and their house is full of you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Be blessed. Have a great week. Thank you, guys. Just real quickly, Johnny's got to run out. So if, if, if you need anything, feel free to come up and run and get me. But he's got to run and get to that funeral right away. So we're going to bless him and send him on his way. All right. Thank you, guys.